Coming up on the Doctor's Hospital podcast. A lot of people say, well, I use coconut oil or I use coconut milk, but this is the only saturated fat along with palm oil, the plant oil that is saturated that has some contributing factor towards um, cardiovascular disease. At Doctor's Hospital, our lamp just got brighter. The Loyalty Advantage Membership Program now has three unique plans to choose from. From LAMP prepaid with free prime care visits and service line discounts, LAMP insured with copay waivers and zero upfront collections at the ER and inpatient services, or our new LAMP access, a free plan that offers 10% off lab, pharmacy, and imaging. LAMP has a plan for everyone. To sign up, visit our website or give us a call. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Welcome to the Doctors Hospital podcast. I'm Alexis Burrows, Marketing Director at Doctors Hospital. And today I'm very excited to have on the show Mrs. Yvette Andrew Strawn, who is the Doctors Hospital Director of Clinical Nutrition and Dietary Services. And she's here to talk all about National Nutrition Month, um, which takes place the entire month of March. And the theme for this year's National Nutrition Month is Beyond the Table. So we're going to talk about what that means, um, talk a little bit about how she got into nutrition, and some get some advice and some interesting tidbits on the role of clinical nutrition in the healthcare service. So welcome to the show, Mrs. Andrews Strawn. Hello. Thank you, Alexis, for having me. Glad to be here. All right. Awesome. So let's, let's dive right in. I, I always like to start, and even though, you know, I, I, I was telling our producer this morning um, that the podcast is becoming a bit of a, a, a friends and family show. Um, so we've had on uh, two people who I have connection with, and now my cousin or my wife's cousin, um, Yvette, is on, and we're talking about nutrition. So I wanted to ask you, because I'm not familiar with it, how did you get into clinical nutrition? Like, what was your decision-making process that said, this is what I want to do with my life? Okay, cuz. Well, you know, coming out of high school, everybody wants to be a doctor or become in the medical field. Mm -hmm. But my story really goes quite personal because I was studying biology and also psychology and was going into medical school. But my mom got sick, and that, for me, I was like, hmm, is this something that she's eating or whatever? It has to do with something that, in growing up in Grand Bahama, I was thinking that how does a 40-year-old get so sick mm -hmm. and um, really ways to prevent this from happening again? So I decided it has to do with prevention. So mm -hmm. I really just wanted to get into the preventative field. Mm -hmm. I wanted a preventative field that I really dive into was nutrition, as well as some sort of fitness. So that's how I really got into the study of food and, and its impact on preventing disease. Because okay. as you know, let food be thy medicine and medicine thy food mm. is a key thing. Awesome. Um, so it's not just because you like food, because I know you like food. Oh, I like food too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially food from Andreska's, you know? Oh boy. That's with crab and dough and oh, all of that stuff. So we're not about that. to talk about that no, today. Let's, let's not do that. Healthy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so getting into into the conversation around National Nutrition Month, um, and again, the theme for this year is beyond the table. Can you tell us, um, tell our audience a little bit about what that means to to go beyond the table? Okay, beyond the table. Every year, the Academy of Dietetics and Nutrition puts on a theme for the celebration of the field of nutrition and dietetics. So we're looking at addressing themes such as farm to fork concepts. How do you grow your own vegetables and bringing it to the table? Mm -hmm. Nothing packaged. We're also looking at food production as it relates to how do we get food and how the distribution process procurement, either from the vendors or farmers, navigating your grocery stores from local farmers. We have persons on Gladstone Road. We mm -hmm. have the exchange where we can look at local farmers as well as Fishermen, you know, at Potterski Dock or Montague. And home food safety and storage practices. How do we store our leftovers so that we avoid any foodborne illnesses? And the various ways of really eating around the table, whether it's at school or at work or at any type of event. You know, for the toters, when you go to an event, sort, mm -hmm. of, sort of like that. You don't really have to tote all the food, you know? <laughs> Just tote the vegetables, by the way. LOL. There's always a lot of salad to do. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting that you mention um, food storage because, you know, you know, people say I, I was today years old. Um, so was in the food store last week um, getting Ziploc bags. And 
um, my wife was like, oh, get the freezer ones. And I was like, that doesn't matter. Just get the regular Ziplocs. Like, it's more expensive to get the freezer ones and they give you less. Um, so she did some quick research and realized, like, no, the Ziploc bags for the freezer are designed differently in order to protect from the plastic seeping into the food. So you aren't realistically supposed to use Ziploc freezer bags because the freezer bags are built differently mm-hmm. for use in the freezer. Correct. So it's yes. interesting that you mentioned that because I'm not sure a lot of people know like that sort of information. So I imagine that's very yes. useful for, for people. Definitely. That has to do with storage. But you and there's is the gamut of things that you can talk about with food safety. Mm-hmm. For example, after you cook your your dinner, mm-hmm. before the chicken is still hot, it has to cool to room temperature. Some people just put that hot chicken in the fridge. You don't want to do that. Bring it to room mm-hmm. temperature before you store the leftovers. You mentioned the the, the containers, the mm-hmm. the packaging, so that you prevent any type of um, contamination. Has right. to be the right packaging, and they have a lot of. You know, vacuum seal things if mm-hmm. persons want to go to that end with that expense. But you have fruits and vegetables. You know that, okay, you get better storage. If you have some strawberries that are going to go old, don't put it in the fridge. Just mm-hmm. cut off the stem, put them in the freezer right. in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, and you get more use out of it that way. And, then, and you're using it in a safer way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, let's talk about, I, I imagine, you know, as a, a clinical nutritionist, one of the things that you you end up talking to patients and just people in general about a lot um, would be that concept of having a balanced diet. So what does that look like? And is it different from person to person? So like, for example, is a balanced diet for me different from what it would be for you, different from what it would be for like a teenager? What does that look like and how is it different? Well, definitely it'll be different. I know that you just had a, a young baby. Mm-hmm. Was, how, how old is the baby now? Nine months. Nine months. So let's look at that as him being needing some protein now. He's mm-hmm. growing. You know, the first couple months of life, he was, what, 10 pounds? No, because you're pretty big, you know, mm-hmm. 10 pounds. And he would need a little bit more a protein. He's getting breastfed milk and also um, maybe now some solid foods, mm-hmm. little chicken protein. He likes chicken. As well as vegetables. So typically when you're looking at balanced diet, we look at the calories that you need at your lifestyle, mm-hmm. lifespan, like whether you're an infant, mm-hmm. a toddler, a teenager, or a senior, or just a regular average adult. So as, as it relates to just balancing the plate, we look at the, the key macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, mm-hmm. right? And we know that protein we need, a lot of a lot of trends now are talking about um, higher protein diets, but we still have to balance those. Persons who is a renal patient, mm-hmm. depending on their stage of chronic kidney disease, they may need a little bit more protein if they're on dialysis, or they may need a little less. So that's still balanced. We have to balance the amount of protein on their plate. The second source, we're looking at carbohydrates now. Mm-hmm. So a carbohydrate balance, you have to have that balance, but somebody with a di- diabetes diagnosis, mm. you need so much, but to control your blood sugars, we we then look at, hey, maybe we, we want your plate to be no more than 45 or 60 grams of carbohydrates. And lastly, fat. We don't want to have anybody don't want to have too much fat because we know the fat link with, as it relates to cholesterol saturated fat that it's linked to cardiovascular disease. Mm-hmm. So we have to balance the fats as well as the type of fats. So you want to get more omega-3 fatty acids, the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And one of the myths, Alexis, that I realized in working with the patients in our outpatient space at Luden Clinic here at Doctors Hospital is that a lot of people say, well, I use coconut oil or I mm. use coconut milk. You know, coming from Andres, we use a lot of coconut milk. But this is the only saturated fat along with palm oil, a plant oil mm-hmm. that is saturated that has some contributing factor towards um, cardiovascular disease. So, wow. yeah, and increasing your cholesterol. So they're like, oh, I said, like, yes, let's save the coconut oil for your hair, you know, your natural <laughs> hair. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, it's, I think that's important to know because I, I know we were talking a little bit with um, Dr. Bazard last week um, or two weeks ago about um, some of this stuff. And he was saying how, you know, this concept of balanced diet kind of varies depending on 
you know, your level of activity. So for example, I, I like to use The Rock because his his meals on his socials are just insane. You mean so, The Rock, the big bulky yes, guy? Yes, right. Oh, so God. obviously his ba- what is balanced for him in terms of if he's trying to achieve a certain goal is very different from what it would be for me, what it would be different, what, what it would be for you. Mm-hmm. And so the concept of a balanced diet, while there are some key tenets, I imagine, that carry through, it's going to vary from person to person depending on age, stage and what your level of activity is all of those sorts exactly. of things exactly comorbidities all of that plays exactly a so that's what we call in nutrition in a clinical nutrition space is personalized meal planning mm-hmm. so you look at the balanced diet but now we're adding the personalized meal planning on top of that mm-hmm. depending on what you said the comorbidities or whatever is happening with your life what stage of lifestyle that your life that you are in right so you, you mentioned person, personalized meal planning, and that's something that, you know, I guess has been becoming more and more common in, in recent times. Um, and it leads me into my next question, which is, you know, how do you keep up with all of the latest nutrition um, and clinical nutrition and dietary trends? Because there's always something happening in that space. So how do you keep up with everything that's going on? Boy, Alexis, you know, and you always laugh at me with social media. I just probably learn how to use Instagram. I won't even <laughs> tell my age, but you know, I'm young, you just did. <laughs> young at heart. And uh, there's some other stuff that snap this and snip that. Oh, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question, you know, for us, when we have clients coming in, hey, I saw this on this app and it, it can be very challenging to then dispel some of these myths. Mm-hmm. but my advice in keeping up on some of the latest trend is really to then, okay, what is their claim to fame? Mm -hmm. Does it have a research backing and Mm -hmm. what study, what did they say? So they say, okay, if you eat cucumber or drink cucumber water every day, it's going to help with the maybe acne or something. What is the claim to fame there? What is the research? And then also you look at certain organizations like the food and drug administration, which is the FDA, have they approved this claim to fame? Or we can go a little deeper with all the, like you say, latest nutrition and supplement trends. Mm -hmm. Is that, okay, this supplement is saying this, but again, it's not regulated. What does the research study say? What does the, locally, we don't have much um, agencies that kind of combat these claims, but internationally, we can dive deeper. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do when we have those clients and they come Chromium. Can I, I heard if I take chromium, it'll get rid of my diabetes. So I have to look into the study. If I right. take black seed oil, it's going to eliminate my cancer cells. Mm. Or And so those things we have to look. Not saying that it's a yes or a no, but it, they, it may have a complementary science evidence-based approach that can have a role in their overall health. But it really requires you to kind of keep up with what's happening in the world and be able to answer patients from an educated space, right? Yeah, so I'm trying to get better with the the social media. (laughs) (laughs) Understood. Um, You know, one of the things that we've been talking with a, a number of our guests about, especially in this latest iteration of the podcast, is this concept of, you know, the role that medicine plays when it comes to our, over, our overall health. So specifically for you who, who operates in a nutrition space, what do you think is the role of nutrition, especially proper nutrition, when it comes to our overall health and feeling good? Good question. Like you, I started uh, with saying prevention. Mm-hmm. I got into it in terms right. of prevention. Now we're getting in the space of nutrition is also can be treatment or intervention wise, right? So we look at certain factors of with fiber. So you're adding a lot more soluble fiber to lower that cho- cholesterol. But for me, which the whole medical community is now embracing a lot more mm-hmm. from when I first uh, completed my um, degree in dietetics and nutrition, they're now embracing the role, the co- collaborative or co- uh, comprehensive role that nutrition plays with medicine. Mm-hmm. And looking at ways you get the referrals from a physician to say that let's provide this personalized meal planning with this patient who may have uh, dyslipidemia, which is high cholesterol. And this we can now work with them on tips or meal planning strategies mm. to help lower it so that by the time they return to the physician and they repeat their labs, that we've had some type of success. We've mm-hmm. progressing to goal with nutrition having a major impact 
on the, the overall care of the patient with the medical professionals. You, you mentioned again, this concept of personalized meal plans. Um, so when you're working with a client, how do you go about tailoring a nutrition plan, a, a personalized meal plan, if you will, that's just right for them? Okay, good question. So we start with the whole nutrition care process and mm -hmm. the process starts with the assessment. So I'm assessing you right now, right, Alexis? So you tell me, so what do you eat every day? Uh, <laughs> is my I wife going to listen to this? Because I, I need to tell the truth. Um, yeah. So, um, so I, I don't typically have breakfast every day. Some days I do, some days I don't. If I have breakfast, most often it would be like eggs and a breakfast meat, so either bacon or sausage um, with grits or with toast as a sandwich, um, sometimes with avocado, sometimes with fruit. Um, every now and then you do the pancakes, okay. that sort of thing. Um, lunch. Um, so let's let's stop there okay. right now at breakfast, mm -hmm. right? So first now you've, so based on my assessment so far, you're skipping breakfast, so you're not breaking the fast because we know that breakfast is breaking the fast. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, or more, more so, you may have a protein breakfast, which includes the egg and the, the toast with avocado and some fruits. Mm -hmm. Okay? So right there, I'm saying that now your calorie... Um, you're starting the day with a reduced calorie. By midday, you like probably very lethargic. So now we're going to look at probably balancing how we can first uh, overcome this skipping meals. Mm -hmm. What are some strategies? So this is now personalized. So can you, do you do smoothies? Would your wife do a, a fruit, fruit and vegetable smoothie with you mm -hmm. and add a little protein powder in there for you before you leave? Right. So we, we don't typically do protein powder, powder with the smoothies, but yes, we'll do smoothies from time to time. We'll do cereals from time to time. Um, but that, that is most commonly, I, I think, what I would eat for breakfast. But yeah, smoothies we do, but like I said, not necessarily protein powder. Um, yeah. Okay. And so we go a little deeper now. So mm -hmm. we're looking at, okay, when what, what does your cholesterol look like? What is, are you? <laughs> oh, 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 I have oh. no idea. Hypertensive. When last you checked your A1C? When last you checked your um, not in a while. I probably do for your renal annual. panel if yeah. your kidney function. Yeah, I probably I'm probably due for an annual. Okay, you got me on blast, man. Uh oh. So those <laughs> things would be then now where we get into the personal aspect of mm -hmm. because we're now dealing with the protein powder and the smoothie in the morning with the fruits and vegetables. So I'm now personalizing it for you to say, okay, well, Alexis, because you're so bad at. Um, getting in some fruits and vegetables in the day, let's start with a smoothie breakfast. And then if you're going to have the omelet, have your wife throw in some spinach, throw mm -hmm. in some mushrooms and throw in some tomatoes and uh, onions or something. Gotcha. Right. So that's really where it starts. Mm -hmm. Really finding out the assessment of your history, your diet history, right. your meal history, finding out your assessment on your health status. And that's where we work along with the physicians on mm -hmm. the lab, because then you, you bring your lab work with us. Right. And then we know more specific as to, okay, well, not diabetic, but hey, um, maybe some kidney issues, your sodium may be high, your albumin may be low, and then we got to then personalize a little bit more protein and less salt mm -hmm. in your diet. Right. So basically what it is, you're trying to get us complete a picture of what that person looks like across both their eating patterns, their health status, all of that sort of stuff exactly. before you get into the personalized plan. Okay. Exactly. Everything doesn't work for everyone. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. So we need to pause quickly for a commercial break. Uh, great conversation thus far, and we'll pick it back up after these words from our sponsors. At Doctors Hospital, we offer cutting-edge diagnostic equipment and laboratory services. These encompass mammography, bone density procedures, as well as the nation's exclusive 3T MRI and Seoul 128 Slice CT Scanner. The effectiveness of medical treatment relies on accurate diagnosis, and our role is to facilitate that precise identification. Moreover, we deliver unmatched imaging excellence through highly advanced equipment that sets us apart. Doctors Hospital's diagnostic services perfectly align with medical needs. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Isn't your health worth it? So let's pick up our conversation um, and shift gears a little bit. Um, one of the things that, again, we've talked about in a couple of different spaces in the past few weeks um, on the podcast is the connection between um, different areas of medicine and mental health and well-being. So 
Um, from your perspective, can you talk a little bit about how a little bit about how what we eat can affect our mood and our mental health? Okay, mood and food. That's mm-hmm. what we're talking about. Good question, Alexis. So we know that recent research studies from the American Heart Association, I think last year, December, would have come out and reported that healthy choices, such as the Mediterranean diet, you Mm -hmm. heard of the Mediterranean diet, Mm -hmm. full of fruits, full of vegetables, whole grains, and lean meats, or lean proteins, actually has a positive effect on keeping depression at bay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Simply because you're looking at these foods, such as the omega-3 fatty acids, and they're also looking at fruits and vegetables. And we also know that a a uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away, Mm -hmm. have more higher levels of happiness. Mm -hmm. Associated with it. Associated with it. Mm -hmm. The omega-3 fatty acids, when you get from your fish Fish. oils, Mm -hmm. exactly, and also the nut oils, Mm -hmm. you got the walnut oils, the almonds, these are the good stuff because they they also get plenty of rap for that they feel good. Okay, they're mm-hmm. anti-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory. And even though, yes, I'm going to say this, chocolate has a special treat benefit. They have pro- properties that actually improve your mood hmm. and reduce tension. But remember, the key is to choose real chocolate. Mm-hmm. Dark is best mm-hmm. in moderation. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it was, a, <laughs> it was a joke I was going to make them, but I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah, 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 All right, yeah. so Go that's, ahead. that's <laughs> So, so what are the, what are the bad foods? What are the bad foods? Because I, I feel like basically the fast foods are the bad foods. So now we flip it, right? right. So mm-hmm. we're looking at the refined, the fast food, the French fries, the cheeseburgers, mm-hmm. and you got the refined sugars in the sodas mm-hmm. and the sweetened um, cakes and treats. So you know what sugar does. You, you have you get the high and then you get the crush. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you get this high, this rush, mm-hmm. and then you just feel like ugh. You know, so those things you want to avoid, right? Because it gives you the high. But when you have that in the low valley, it it can really impact your mood and your energy level. And so you want to keep things more healthy, less refined, more wholesome. Like like I said before, the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, You want to eat stuff that's alive. Exactly. And stay happy. All right. So let's move into a common complaint that people have when they talk about trying to eat healthy and that's the cost associated with purchasing healthy food so how true is it that you know it's it's really expensive to eat healthy and how can individuals manage that cost well this is a good question good question because actually one of week one's theme for the national nutrition month Mm -hmm. is eating well doesn't have to be expensive And you want to look at ways in which you can go to the supermarket, Mm -hmm. save big, including how to reduce food waste and using various tips or cooking styles or even coupons. I know that Mm. certain food stores around here have um, loyalty programs Mm -hmm. as well as they have like the old fashioned food stamps. stamps, Right. But this year... We're teaching you ways or challenging you also to go to your local farmer, Mm -hmm. go to Mm. have your fish man on speed dial and, you know, bargain. Or you can even share. You can go to some of the wholesalers, the vendors and let's say family based shopping. Mm -hmm. So if you have a family of four and you have a like my cousin here, we can then go to Gladstone Mm -hmm. Road and say, can do you want to split a case of? Salmon. Oh, that's true. Okay. And so you're buying in bulk. You may not have the opportunity to store or use all that bulk, but you can then split it between four ways and everybody put their portion of the cost and weekly save money there. But there are other ways to really look out for, you don't have to get the brand, you know, let's look at the mayo. The the brand is Hellman's. Mm -hmm. Mayo has gone significantly from like $3 to about $8, $9 a 64-ounce jar within the last year. Yeah, everything is more expensive. Okay. There's a craft brand of mayo that may be less expensive. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you have to look at it. not too much knockoffs, but if it tastes good and it is more affordable, you don't really have to be brand-based when you're shopping. You just look at 
the health benefits. If you look at the label and it has the same thing that the brand has and it can play a part in your recipe and give you the same effect, why not? And save a few dollars. There are various ways in which you can stay nourished on Mm -hmm. any budget. And this year, I'm very excited about bringing the same out to the community. Okay, awesome. Um, I think there's a challenge associated with that that you wanted to talk about a little bit, right? Yes. So Doctors Hospital Clinical Nutrition Services, we're partnering, of course, with marketing Mm -hmm. department to bring out what we call the Blue Marlin Grocery Shop Challenge. Okay. And let's ask. The Blue Marlin is because we know what Blue Marlin is, right? It's a $100 bill. A $100 bill. So we're challenging you, the community, Mm -hmm. to take that $100 and participate in this challenge. So you're going to take the $100, go to the food store of your choice, Mm -hmm. and you're going to shop fresh, shop healthy, and the rules are you got to stay within that budget and shop for a five-day sustainability of food. And also we're looking to make sure that all groups are represented. I started the podcast talking about your carbohydrates, the wholesome grains. Mm -hmm. Talk about our protein and we talk about the fats. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to upload that video and and send it to either clinicalnutrition at doctorshospital.com or their social media platforms. Right. So you can upload your video um, to Instagram um, with the hashtag Blue Marlin Marlin Challenge. Um, And you can also mention Doctors Hospital when you post it, and we'll be able to see and keep track of everybody's um, attempts at the Blue Marlin Challenge. Great stuff. I wish all the best of luck. (laughs) $100. I don't know how it's going to be done. But if you do do it, and we're going to rate your videos, your participants will get a chance to win. First place, $250 food voucher from Mm -hmm. our Doctors Hospital Clinical Nutrition Service. Our second place prize is a free nutrition consultation with a 30-minute massage and fitness assessment from our partnering department, which is Doctors Hospital Rehabilitation Services, Rehab Center. And also third place, just a $50 Myers Lunch Certificate. Myers is our Doctors Hospital Cafe on Collins Avenue. Nice, 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 nice. So is is staff eligible for that? Yes, most definitely. Okay. We want staff to participate in. Awesome sauce. Okay, let's let's see if we can we can wrap our conversation up. Um, I imagine that getting people to stick to changes in their diet can be tough. So, what is your secret for helping patients or clients make lasting changes that they can stick to? Um, that's a good question too. You know, Alexis, what because I was on a social media junkie. But I'm getting more into it. I've realized, let's say, for example, I have a particular patient that she was newly di- diagnosed diabetic. And I have an app that I found that call, called My Food Diary. It's free mm-hmm. online. Um, if you want to download the app, you can. But you can just search the, app you know, the, store. the browser and just search the different types of food and see what calories they have, the different amount of protein, fat, as well as carbohydrates. So I started with her. I said, "Can you let's let's try this out?" And I was surprised and positively surprised that that this app got her the adherence that she needed. Followed her, gave her tips. Ooh. So one of the things when I first started, we didn't have these things, but you can look now to use social media apps to help you stay motivated. Stay. They would say, "Did you drink your water today?" It just shoots push messages. To your phone. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. To your phone. Notifications. Notification. Push notifications to your phone. Okay. Do, did you remember to count your calories and to really track and keep on track of, did you skip breakfast today? Just grab a smoothie, like we said. So to give you a little more reminders, because nowadays everybody is on their phone. So that is definitely one of my new tips that mm-hmm. I'm using now with my clients. Before, old school tips would just be to, you know, buddy support, write things down. But let's use the what's out there now on social media, the apps to help us with stickability with everything, not just our diet, but also with food costs and expenses with when you go to the grocery shop, you can look for the bargains. Yeah. And, you know, technology can be good in in those ways. I know sometimes technology gets a bad rap, but, you know, you do have spaces like that where there's value in in these new apps and things like that to help with, with, with stuff like this. All right. So my last question, well, I have two questions, but my last question for you is, you know, as we close out, what is your best piece of advice for someone who's trying to eat right? 
let food be thy medicine and medicine thy food. Okay, so when you're selecting your food, is it is this something that will benefit you? Mm. Okay, or is it something that will harm you? Okay, and you want to definitely go to the benefits. So we spoke about choosing more of the the wholesome fruits and vegetables, the right type of fats, mm -hmm. the omega-3 fatty acids, and less of the refined sugars, less of the fast food, because as food is be thy medicine and medicine thy food, we will keep many things at bay. Awesome. Um, so obviously you have to tell the people where they can find you at. How does somebody go about booking an appointment with you to see you? Is it referral based only or people can just reach out and, and get an appointment? How does that work? Well, I'm always at doctor's hospital <laughs> with a big smile and some big fluffy curls at doctor's hospital. You can reach me at clinical nutrition at doctorshosp.com or you can dial 302 four six hundred and ask for extension F O O D food. So you can call the main line oh, nice. and just ask for the extension food because that's where you reach us. That is cute. I did not know that. Awesome. All right. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on the podcast. Um, we look forward to, to probably taking a, 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 another crack at a conversation with you further on down the line, because I think there's a lot more that we can we can discuss and talk about. But this has been great. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. So for our listeners, um, thanks again for joining us on the Doctors Hospital podcast. As always, we ask that you comment, like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you here next week. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. Your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the doctor's hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com.